Chapter 14 Bonku Babu's Friend In the last lesson, you read about Bonku Babu and how everyone made fun of him. Then one day, while walking home through a shortcut, he saw a strange light near the pond. What could it be? Read on to find out. Millie Pink 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 Millie Pink 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 said the strange voice loudly. Bonku Babu almost jumped. What did it mean? What language was this? And where was the speaker? The next words the voice spoke made his heart jump again. Who are you? Who are you? These were English words. Was the question addressed to him? Bonku Babu swallowed. I am Bonku Bihari Datta, sir. Bonku Bihari Datta, he replied. Are you English? Are you English? The voice went on. No, sir, Bonku shouted back. Bengali, sir. There was a short pause. Then the voice was speaking again. Namaskar! Bonku Babu heaved a sigh of relief and returned the greeting. Namaskar, he said, suddenly realizing that the invisible bonds that had been holding him tightly had disappeared. He was free to run away, but he did not. He now saw a portion of the glass mound was sliding to one side, opening out like a door. Through the door emerged a head, like a plain, smooth wall, and then the body of a weird creature. Its arms and legs were amazingly thin. With the exception of its head, its whole body was covered by a shiny pink outfit. Instead of ears, it had a tiny hole on each side of its head. There were two holes where there should have been a nose and another gaping hole where the mouth should be. There was no sign of hair anywhere. Its eyes were round and bright yellow and appeared to be glowing in the dark. Having stared at Bonku Babu for nearly a minute, the creature spoke again. Are you human? Is this earth? Yes, replied Bonku Babu. Ah, I thought as much. My instruments are not working properly. I was supposed to go to Pluto. That is why I first spoke to you in the language they use on Pluto. When you didn't reply, I realized I had landed on the wrong planet. Bonku Babu did not know what to say as he was feeling quite uncomfortable. The creature had started to press his arms and legs with its long, slim fingers. When it finished this examination, it introduced itself. I am Ang from the planet Cranus, a far superior being than man. I know 14,000 languages. There is not a single language in your entire solar system that I do not know. I also know 31 languages spoken on planets outside your system. I have been to 25 of them. Bonku Babu scratched his head and swallowed hard. Take a look at this. Ang offered him a small object, which looked like a pebble. Bonku Babu touched it for an instant and felt the same electric current pass through his body. He withdrew his hand at once. Ang smiled. A little while ago, you could not move. Do you know why? It was only because I had this little thing in my hand. It would stop anyone from getting closer. It makes any enemy perfectly powerless without hurting them. 
Bonku Babu was taken aback. He ran his tongue over his parched lips. Ang spoke again. I have been watching you. I have examined your arms and legs. There is no doubt that you belong to a much inferior species. However, as far as humans are concerned, you are not too bad. I mean, you are a good man, but you have a major fault. You are too meek and mild. You must always speak up against injustice and protest if anyone hurts or insults you. Anyway, it was nice to have met you, although I really wasn't supposed to be here at this time. There's no point in wasting more time on your earth. I had better go. Goodbye, Mr. Ang. I am very happy to have... Bonku Babu could not complete his sentence. In less than a second, almost before he could grasp what was happening, Ang had leapt into his spaceship and risen over Poncha Ghosh's bamboo grove. Then he vanished completely. Bonku Babu realized that the crickets had started chirping again. It was really quite late. He resumed walking towards his house. The next day was a Sunday. Everyone had turned up for their usual meeting at Sripati Babu's house. Tonight, Poncha Ghosh was also present at the meeting. He was talking about his bamboo grove, where all the bamboos around the pond had shed all their leaves. Everyone was talking about it, when suddenly Bonku Babu entered the room. No, to say entered would be wrong. It was as if a small hurricane swept in. Bonku Babu then burst into a guffaw and laughed loudly for a whole minute, as no one had ever heard him laugh before. When he finally stopped laughing, <coughs> he cleared his throat and began speaking. Friends, I have great pleasure in telling you that this is the last time you will see me at your meeting. The only reason I came today is to tell you all a few things before I go. First of all, this is for all of you. You speak a great deal of rubbish. Only fools talk of things they don't know anything about. Second, this is for Chandi Babu. At your age, hiding other people's shoes and umbrellas is not just childish, but totally wrong. Kindly bring my umbrella and brown canvas shoes to my house tomorrow. Nidhu Babu, if you call me Bunkum, I will call you Nitwit. And you must learn to live with that. And Sripati Babu, you are an important man and must have hangers on, but please count me out from today. Ah, Poncha Babu, you are here as well. Let me inform you that last night an Ang arrived from the planet Cranus and landed on the pond in your bamboo grove. We had a long chat. The Ang was most amiable. Bonku Babu finished his speech and slapped Bharav Chakravarti's back so hard that he choked. Then he made his exit, walking swiftly, his head held high. <laughs>